Okay guys, pardon the hair, I just got out of the shower. I was out working in the backyard, pulling weeds, and I uh, got myself right in the middle of a bunch of fire ants, and they would not listen to me, they just attacked. Anyway, alright, I wanted to do a video here um, on continuing what we have been talking about, about uh, the creationary process and such between, uh, I'll talk a little bit about long-term humans and star seeds and these are new star seeds now understand that we are all star seeded when i take uh, when i talk about long-term humans there aren't long-term humans over here and star seeds over here it is a a uh, a line and there are different levels all the way across so you can have somebody who has been here almost from the creation of the game to all the way down to like me who has never been here before first time in on, in this game altogether and everything in between so it's not cut and dry think of everything that you think of it's got to be this or that that is all a part of the dualistic game and it's just really not uh, it's not the truth it's not the truth. Nothing is that cut and dry and simple. But for our purposes today, we're going to talk about uh, dividing them into two basic categories. And whichever one you lean towards the most, then you'll be in this category or that uh, frequently. And there are lots of, of people that are right in the middle, too. So understand there's not one or the other. There's a uh, line where a lot of people uh, could fall anywhere on that line. Okay, now whenever I'm talking about, again, whenever I'm talking about an energy being versus a physicality being, that again is just like the long-term human and the star seed. There isn't one or the other, they're really both, but you can tend towards, have a, a more of a percentage at one end or the other. Okay, just like you can be more of a long-term human and less of a new far, star seed and vice versa. Same thing is true with physicality versus energetic type being. Now, when I talk about energetic being, I want you to think we're going to go to our whiteboard again. And I want you to think of, see all these dot, 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 Sorry, some of those are lines, but anyway, there. I want you to see all those dots in there. Now, all of those dots are up here, and let's say that this is me, and I'm up here in this area where these dots are all spaced out. There's a lot of space. And let's say that there are 100,000 dots, bits, there are bits, 100,000 bits of, bits of what? Bits just bits, 100,000 bits, and you can make things with this, with those 100,000 bits. Now up here, the more energy type being like me, then I would take these 100,000 bits and I might, um, I might put them together with space in between them so they look like a spiral. Can you see that? But there's still space in between them. Or I may take that 100,000 bits and I might put them in a row like this. Or I might put some of those bits together and make a line and then a dot, dot, line, kind of a Morse code type thing to create with those 100,000 bits. Okay? But there's still lots and lots of space in between them. When I'm talking about an energy being, that's what we do. We take those bits and we still, they're all spread out, and we create stuff with them that flow, which is similar to music or, or um, light, different colored light. This is how we create. But let's take a long-term human over here. What they do, what they do, especially ones that have been, this is a really, I'm at one end of the extreme over here, and at the other end is a long-term human that's been here almost from the beginning. And what these guys do 
is at the beginning when they first started doing this, they would take the 100,000 bits, they would put them very close together, much closer together, like here. And they would create things. Okay? Then with every lifetime that they came back, they would put them closer and closer together. Closer and closer. Closer and closer. And more and more and more. To the point that these 100,000 bits now can fit into that one dot. And the way that they do that is they put them very, very, very close together. And then think of a really thick, I've, I've used this analogy before, a really thickly wove tapestry, okay? So now they've taken these 100,000 bits, they put them teeny tiny together, and they've weaved, 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 and they weaved them, weaved, weaved them, and weaved them until they've gotten them into the tiniest, tiniest dot in layer upon layer upon layer, where they it looks like it's a solid dot. Just like your body looks like it's a solid body. But it's really not. This solid body is really made up of, of molecules that have a great deal of space between them, right? Well, whenever a long-term human creates in deep physicality, 3D, is they make all of these bits compressed down into this teeny tiny little space and the way they do that is by taking these things and weaving them putting them next together by using linear time space and then they weave 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 so what my confusion was is my creationary processes up there where i look outside in and move within my creation which they still do the same thing in this tiny dot but because it's so tiny and it's so compressed and it's so intricate that even though up here I can go from dot to dot and or in between dot to dot, whichever, I can actually go from being inside the bits or I can look at it from the outside. And if I'm on the inside, I am probably creating with that bit. And I'm going from one bit to the other bit to the other bit and I'm creating like this whoosh, 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 whoosh. Whereas a long-term human in each being that creates physicality is going into this tiny dot and in that tiny dot that you can't see, there's all of this little. And then they too can go from within these thin, 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 um, think string, strands of uh, tapestry or they can like fly right next to it like if I was creating up here in the energy field and I was the one that was doing the creating I would go from energy bit to energy bit to energy bit like this flow 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 deciding which way to go and which bit to pick up next time to build my beautiful creation and you Let's say that you aren't creating with me up here in the energy side, but we're talking and hanging out. So you can actually stand next to me as I fly and create, and you're just a tiny bit behind me so that you can see what I have created, what I am going to create, what I'm creating in the moment. Okay, so I would be within the bits creating. You would be outside the bits watching me create. Okay. Same thing is true down here in the dot. So when I did ayahuasca, and I came into this point here, and here's me, and here's the NDE. Okay, here's me. Okay, and this is um, me in physical body. Here's my physical body. Here's my physical body. And I went in for the NDE, went up for the NDE, or as I like to say, the DDE. So I want you all to know that. Uh, everybody else is going to call this a near-death experience. I did a um, podcast interview with a guy named Stephen. Uh, he lives in Thailand right now. But he's doing a new podcast on love and sex. And he asked me to do 
uh, an interview with him for his show. I'll let you know when that's out. He's going to send me a copy after he finishes editing it. And so uh, when we were talking, oops, sorry guys. When we were talking, uh, we were talking about the NDE and such and what I saw over there. I told him, to me, new NDE is not accurate. Because I do have a history as a nurse, an ER and ICU nurse, so I have been around a lot of people that have died, and a lot of people that, in my estimation, had a near-death experience. And a near-death experience is an experience where you're nearly dead. You know, near-death experience. That means you were nearly dead. Uh, nearly dead uh, doesn't mean that you died. In my estimation, what happened to me was I died. I died and came back. I didn't nearly die. I literally died and then chose to come back. So my experience from my opinion using uh, English words is dead, dead experience. I didn't have a near death experience. I didn't nearly die. I died, died. So mine, I say DDE. Mine was a DDE. And I think an NDE person is somebody who doesn't go very far when they die. I think that is very accurate for a lot of them. That if you don't get out of this game and if you don't um, get out of time space, I think you had a near-death experience. And then those of us who went out of time and space and went outside the game and beyond, um, the ones that were uh, I, I think near-death experience people, that they do see their family and friends in distress, and that does affect them. Uh, for me, as a dead-dead person, and a lot of the dead-dead people that, um, that I've seen, what little clips I have seen, uh, they, they are not bothered by the fact that their family or friends are in distress, or they will be leaving them behind. Because you're totally outside of this game, you can see everything at once, so there, you can see that everything works out just fine. And eventually, I knew that I was going to die anyway. So uh, whether it was now or, or later, uh, when you're when I was dead, dead, that was not an issue at all. Okay, now sidetrack there. Okay, back to this. And I'm here and uh, laying in the hospital bed in the ER, and I died. So I came up out of this body, up out of this body. Went through the different phases, stepped out of time space, and out of um, the game, this game, and went over to the other side where I would consider home. So this is my home. Okay. And up here, now this is where you insert the 100,000 bits that are all spread out. 100,000 bits. And I went up there and I played, 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 played. Now, at this point, I was out of body for the NDE, for the DDE. I was out of body for that. Very unattached to this skin suit altogether. Now, whenever I, this is me a few weeks ago, and this is me with Aya, with the help of Gaia. Okay, now here I stayed in the physical body. I stayed, stayed in the physical body or the skin suit or a skin suit. Okay, so I stayed in it. So when I turned around and looked at at the end, as I've told you guys, whenever I went through all of figuring out physicality and uh, we'll go into that more as well. And when I finished that, and I said, okay, I finished that. Now, uh, can I go home? Can I go up here? And I said to me, my higher self had a talk with me and, and said, well, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You're in control of everything. But uh, you need to know what the consequences will be if you do that. And I said, okay, then show me the consequences. And that's when I saw that if I decided to go home in that moment, there were no timelines, no aspects of me 
that came back into the body. So I laid on Michelle's couch and died, is what I did. And I saw, because I was in the physical body, I saw, I felt uh, everybody's response. Uh, Stephanie's uh, response, Michelle's response, uh, all of you guys' response. I saw all of them. Now, from my DDE's point of view, out of body, that didn't affect me at all, because I had the same a bunch of people concerned, were unhappy about me leaving. But here, with the eye of my mouth is dry. Pardon me. Thank you. In this one, I stayed in the body. It was connected to it. Whenever I saw how Michelle uh, responded and everybody else, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it at all. It's still very much different uh, how I felt about things and how I saw things because of this little tiny difference in perspective. Very, very different. So then I had a conversation with myself and I said, so basically what you're saying is as long as I am here in this skin suit, if I go to this place up here, if I go up there that I won't come back this time. And I said to myself, yes, that that was accurate, that I would not come back. Now, I should have known that before I did ayahuasca because, you know, excuse me, you guys have heard me say this, that, yeah, I wish I didn't come back. A lot of uh, NDE that are categorized, in my opinion, DDEs, people, they say that, that they didn't want to come back at all because it's so nice over there. Okay, so that made sense. So basically, um, I will experience home whenever I either uh, go to 5D, raise, and leave and go home, or when I die, whichever one comes first. Okay? So up here, we've got all of these dots, back to the original conversation. Got all these dots all um, spaced out. Think of each one of these dots of the 100,000 bits as being resistance. Dominique asks what resistance is. Well, this is what it is. Up here, during my DDE, there is some resistance. Every one of those little dots is a tiny bit of resistance. But it's all spread out, 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 all spread out. The difference between resistance is simple. If I take my hand here and I move it over here, there is some resistance. If you put your hand out the window of a car as you're driving and you do this, there's resistance, even though it's open air. And there's even resistance when I do that. You can feel. You can feel the wind on my hand. Right? That's resistance. And let's say that now my hand is, there's a square aquarium here. There's an aquarium. And my hand is in the aquarium. And I move like this. Okay? That's more resistance. Which would be the equivalent of these... 100,000 bits up here being closer together like this. That's like water. Okay? Now, here is my hand and here is a board. And this is a resistance. Or my hand won't go through it at all. Okay? That is that kind of resistance, is all of these 100,000 bits being jam-packed into that one dot. Well, because it's like that, if you're doing resistance when it's this resistant, where they're so tight together, the only way my hand is going to go have anything to do with this board or get by this board is to go around it or around it. You must go and bend with that resistance. And the more tightly packed it is formed, then the more you must learn to follow the line and go down the hand, go up, down, and around like that. Okay? Okay. So whenever it talks about maneuvering in with the Aya, instead of going up here and playing, which I did whenever I died with the DDE, I got and I started creating, I started seeing what other people were creating. 
So up here, I would either flow in between all this empty space, looking what other people had created up here with all this infinite bits, or I could go and start creating my own by going from this one to this one to this one in a manner like this. You see so much more freedom and movement, even if you're looking at somebody else's creation. There's so much openness and movement in it that it, it's very, very fun. Which down here in the ayahuasca, where all of those dots are now in that tiny dot right there, now you can see the difference in, you've got to get and blow this up, blow this up, until you can find the different 100,000 bits. So that you could follow, either create your own perspective with your own aspects of the prisms around you, or you can stand next to one of these creationary lines and kind of flow with it to see what it creates. But in order to do that, you have to be willing to bend. Now, once you get the hang of it, once you don't expect all this empty space in between things, that there's a whole lot more resistance in this tiny dot, once I get, you get the hang of that, then you can flow just as fast. Just as fast, just as fast. But this is what I'm talking about whenever I talk about resistance and exactly what it looks like in real life that there's very little resistance here energy and there's a lot of resistance here so you have to go around it like water like river which is ayahuasca filled with physicality now with um, earth with Gaia physicality it's the tiniest most intensely packed of all of it so tiny and complex that you think it's black as night. It looks solid as this, as far as getting through it, and it looks as 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 uh, looks dark, 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 dark. There's no light in between it at all. So what I was trying to do whenever I did my Aya experience is I was trying to do what I did up here in here. So I was trying to flow, 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 run, run, run like this, like the wind, whoosh, 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 whoosh. Whereas down here in the ayahuasca physicality, 3D physicality, you must go deep within and then bend and flow tiny, 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 tiny like water. Water getting in and flowing through everything, absolutely everything. Okay. Now, so that's the difference between physicality and um, energetic beings. Although, like I've said before, one end energetic, the other end physicality. One end a uh, long-term human, the other end brand new star seed, and anything in between. Anything in between. Okay. Now. In order to do that in physicality, in the physicality form, a long-term human, after all of these times of living here, of creating all of these many little prisms that they can um, put in a row to make it look like they're having linear time space, what a long-term human will do is they will go, okay, have an experience, look at the experience. So they create an experience. They create an experience with a collective that matches them vibrationally. Okay? So they create an experience with a collective that is vibrational by collective it's vibrationally the same as them, or in the range, same range as they are, okay? This is a long-term human, and they love this. They've got lots of options with all of their lives. They've been here, all of the, all of the prisms that they've collected and put in there for them to play with. They've got a lot of options 
to mess with. So they're happy in this moment because of what they've created. What they've created. So they will have an experience. They'll create an experience. Then they'll look at that experience. And this happens wicked fast. <clears throat> they'll uh, analyze the, the creation, the experience that they've created, whatever that might be. And they'll look at it and they go, okay, this is good. Or this is really good. Okay. And anything in between. They do do bad as well. They can say, no, nah, I don't like that. For the most part, though, a long-term human will look at the circumstance uh, on a much higher level, of course, than from their brains. And they'll look at it and they go, that was good. That was pretty well done. I kind of like that. But what if I tweaked it a little bit? And in that tweaking, now they have added another prism to their available options. Okay. So they really go from good to really good. And then they usually, if they're done with that, they will go, okay, that's done. Now let me try over here. And they start putting things together again. Or they might say, okay, that was good. And, but I'm looking for really good. So I'm going to take what I created, which I think is good, and I'm going to tweak it. Tweak and have a new experience, tweak, create, new collective that vibrates the same as they do, and now they're going to assess it. Okay, and let's say it went well. Yeah, they created an experience, you analyzed it, and you went, yeah, that's good, but I want really good, so let's tweak it in this way, create a new circumstance with, with a new collective, that vibrates in the same range as, as this creator does. And then you look back and go, hmm, okay, that was, that was really good. So they're most of the time going to assess and find somewhere between good, really good. Do I want to leave it like it is? Do I want to add to it? What do I want to do? That's long-term human. Long-term human. Long-term human over here on this side. Now, on this side, on the other side, is me, which is a new star seed. I don't have very many prisms. I don't have very many options to choose from. So, I create a circumstance with a collective that vibrates like me. And then I look at it. And because I don't have very many prisms, also over here, long-term humans, a lot of amnesia. And the more lives that they live... More lives equals more amnesia. More amnesia. More lives that a person lives equals more uh, amnesia. More lives, more amnesia. And that is true. We'll continue to do so because the whole point was for an aspect of God to come down here, live as a regular human in physical form, forgetting that they are God. And as I've told you before, it is very tricky, difficult thing to do. Very difficult. So it literally takes thousands upon thousands upon thousands to millions of human lifetimes to completely forget the God that you are, that you are not going to be triggered by anything that will remind you who you are. Okay? Until, of course, <clears throat> this is true, more lives, more amnesia, until that being decides that they're done with the game and they want to come back out, out of the game, go on to another game. At which point the long-term human will start to remember things. This is exactly what G-Man is doing. He's a very long-term human, but he is done. So now he is raising his vibrations because he is going to um, leave this game and he's going to go start another game that's very similar to this. It will have a linear time space. It will have uh, all the dimension dimensions that you know now, even though his will be from a different perspective and he, there will be differences in it a little bit here and there. He'll have his own game. Okay. 
back over to the star seat. I don't have as many uh, prisms. I don't have as many options. I, I have, I have uh, very little amnesia. And even before I died, and even then, um, things were forever triggering me to just this knowingness. Well, that knowingness is what everybody's trying to get rid of in the whole, the long-term human and all the beings that want to experience uh, physicality, forgetting that they're a god. Well, um, that's what you haven't done as a brand new star seed. So your brand new star seeds are forever getting this knowingness that that's not right. Uh, I don't belong here. It shouldn't run like this. That twinge is always kicking off of ultimately that you're a god. So everything that they say, all these things that they say and that you've been taught your whole life as truths, your internal self has been saying, uh, no, uh, that's wrong. There's no, that's, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. That is what a new starseed is doing. The new starseeds came to help Guy with their last final stages to get into 5D. That's why you came. You didn't come over here to play this game over here. That isn't your goal. You came over to help Gaia. You're in the middle of this process where this is what they are doing. That's what the game was set for. But your game is to come over here and help Gaia. So you didn't go through all of this to have that amnesia. So you've got just enough, just enough. Some more, some less. Okay? So, over here, because you don't have as much amnesia as the long-term human and you're forever getting triggered, when you create something over here, like the long-term human did, then you create, and then on a higher level, you set back, and you, you also are creating with a collective that is in your same vibrational uh, range. Then you sit back and you look at it, a star seed will, and the star seed... We'll look at the circumstance and say, no, this isn't good. I don't like this. I don't like this. However, the starseed can say, well, I don't like this, but I'm going to assess it. This is what I've created. I don't like it, but it's okay. And usually a starseed will look at any given now moment and they might say, okay, they may say, better than it was, so it's okay, it's better, um, uh, it's good, like that. But they won't be over here going, yeah, that was really good, oh yeah, that was really the best. No, we won't be doing that. We will be saying things like, uh, I guess that wasn't too bad. I guess that's okay. And then we will tweak, starseed, same thing, we'll tweak, looking for better than. So they will, I will look at the circumstance that I've created. I will assess it and go, ah, it was okay, but I think maybe if I tweak it this way, I might get to even better. At which point the starseed will create again, right? Begin again and then sit and then match a collective that matches in a vibratory range and create a circumstance for a person, place, or thing or event. And then you'll sit back and assess and be right back to the beginning. Assess was it better? Was it worse? Is there anything I can do about it? Yeah, I think I want to tweak, tweak, go to the next moment. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, that's it for that one. Um, yeah. Right. And the reason why I'm doing the, um, the website, and the website will have memberships. The membership is $25 a month. If you cannot afford $25 a month, please email me. The contact information is there. Email me. Tell me your circumstances, and I will take a look. And uh, we'll come up with something that is acceptable for you.
But this is going to have a membership fee because as we get into these things, then um, we're going to be talking about some things that I don't want on YouTube open to the public and their attacks. Okay? Because this is going to be up on YouTube, but this is pretty benign stuff. There's a lot of people that are going to say, well, that's crazy talk, and that's fine. But I want to be able to have a conversation with you guys and do videos where I could really talk about some things that would probably offend um, a lot of people. And you know me, I do not want to cause anybody any kind of negative uh, thinking or negativity in their life at all. So we're not going to do that. We will go over number one. Uh, there's a lot of people also that do not want to... Uh, the people around them would not make their life very easy if they knew what um, my follower was believing or listening to. That would they would they would catch a lot of flack for that. So, I want a protected place where uh, that person can show their face, or at least, even if they still aren't good with that, they could still openly and honestly share their experiences and their thoughts. On these matters okay makes sense all right so yeah that's what we'll be doing now um, as I go down these these last uh, round that you kind of have seen um, <clears throat> I think I'll kind of build on these and go from one to the other to the other and I will probably take these off and put them over on the website uh, because with some directions so that if somebody new comes in because you can see if I've got 50 more videos done and these are stuck in the middle these are not individual videos that can be watched um, really by themselves without some some explanation uh, in some way and this is the way the new ones are going to be I think probably I will pick subject matter and put these things together in video format <clears throat> and break them down into, I will try to get this lowered back down to about 10 or 15 minutes is what I prefer. So when we go into a certain um, arena of thought, what I'll do is I'll almost put these videos together like a course or a class that's about a certain subject. I think that's what I'll do. Again, that will be over in that membership um, category. Because we want everybody to hear this information, but I want them to hear what they need to hear at the right time and place. Because if certain people come in and they hear a, the wrong video, one of my videos, and it makes them mad, and then they just shut down and there's no... Um, option for them to hear anything else ever. And I don't want to do that. don't want to be a part of that. So, that's kind of what I had in mind here. And I love the live stream, so I'll definitely be doing more of those. I might do one of those this evening or tomorrow. Yeah. This evening or tomorrow. Okay. Alright, guys. That's it for this one. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Huge, huge hugs, and I'll see you later. Bye now.